You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now today we are drawing attention to those who have been imprisoned in different places and in poor conditions without their friends or relatives knowing why and where they are. It is the International Day for the Disappeared, which is marked on August the 30th annually. A day for raising awareness that enforced disappearances is a crime and should not be used as a tool to deal with situations of conflict. It also draws attention to the impact that these disappearances have on their families and communities of victims. Communication Specialist, International Committee of the Red Cross, Aliu Dawobe, joins me now via Zoom to help make sense of uh, and help us understand these issues and the dynamics of it. Aliu, it's good to have you join me today. Good to have you too. Great. Now, c could you make us understand, uh, on a day like this, c could you draw our attention to the objectives and the significance of a day like this? Thank you very much for inviting me into your program. Uh, a day like this is a day that uh, we at the International Committee of the Red Cross and also the Red Cross family uh, sit and remember that there are hundreds of thousands of families out there that are missing due to conflict and other situations of violence and also other disasters. We associate closely with the families of these people that are missing to make them understand that they are not alone, alone in this, that they are supported by us at all costs. And we understand how they, they have, the, the trauma they are facing in losing the loved ones that they are having. So a day like this is a day that is set aside for our organization to remember this and also to associate closely with these people and to try to see what we can do to keep supporting them so that they will come out of the trauma they are facing because they have lost a loved one uh, uh, in their family. Hmm. All right. Now, now, how does the issue of missing people constitute a humanitarian tragedy? If you have to make us understand this. Many times people just look at humanitarian tragedies as people losing their homes, losing their food and also losing so many other valuables without noticing, noticing that uh, when a family member is missed, uh, it is much more traumatic than missing some valuables that you can recover. Uh, if a family member is missing, the trauma that the family passed through is a lot. So missing people are uh, one of the key tragedies that the global uh, is the, the globe is facing in terms of humanitarian tragedies in the world presently uh, there are over 210,000 people missing across the globe and of these 210,000 people that are missing 44,000 of these cases are in africa in africa Three countries, I mean, seven countries are on the lead. And these countries, on top of them, is Nigeria. Other countries are Libya, Cameroon, Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, to mention a few of these countries. So, looking at these countries and the dynamics of, of conflict within this country, you would be able to understand why you are having a lot of people that are missing. But the case of Nigeria is so peculiar that uh, of the 44,000 people missing in Africa, Nigeria is taking more than 50% of this because Nigeria has a total number of 24,000 people that have been reported missing since we started this uh, activity in 2013 in Nigeria. So, all right. 24,000 people missing for us is just like an eye, a tip of the iceberg. Hmm. Why? Because a very few number of people that are affected by conflicts and are having people missing know that we are doing this activity of reuniting people that are missing. So they come to us and register their cases that they have one or two family members that are missing and they want them to be supported by reuniting them with this family member or for us to go ahead and search for this missing family member. This is what we've been doing since 2013 in Nigeria. Right. It's good to understand uh, the, the, how, how critical these issues are. Uh, I know that uh, the Red Cross 
one way or the other has engaged with families. Can you describe for us, for some of the situations that you have handled, uh, can you make us understand, create a mind picture for us on the, the situation that the families go through when this happens, when they have a missing person? Families actually go through a lot of trauma when they have someone missing. First is not knowing the certainty, whether this person is alive or dead, what condition this person is in. In situations of conflict, uh, like we are facing in Nigeria, you find a lot of people, like I mentioned earlier on missing, 24,000 is, is the biggest case load we have had in Africa. And this is what uh, we are having in Nigeria. So these missing people are actually missing because of the conflict. So the, the, the families sometimes do not actually know what led to the missing. Of course, the conflict led to the missing, but are they really alive or are they are like apprehended by the security forces are on in detention or they are dead so this trauma they pass through a lot of families uh, in the north of nigeria where this conflict is going on uh, families are found to women getting married after a year or two and then after two years the husband turns out and then there will be a lot of uh, issues coming up in terms of how to manage the situation now. So you can see that uh, for people to know that their family is alive and healthy, or at least their family is even dead, helps them to reduce the trauma. In the ICRC, what we do has to do with so many uh, steps in reuniting people that are missing. First we have what we call physical rehabilitation, I mean re reunification, which is the best that people can, 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 can have. Uh, their families coming back to them physically to, to meet with them. This is the, the top of the agenda. The second one is what we call reuniting people through telephone uh, calls. Of course, if someone is in Niger, Cameroon, or Chad, as you can see, the Lake Chad region, it is uh, much easier to inform the families that are far away in another country that, yes, your son, your daughter, your father is alive and is in Niger Republic or in Cameroon or in Chad or back in Nigeria. So this is something that is also done. But also we have what we call the Red Cross messages. Uh, this, we, the, the reunification we do together with the, our family member, the Nigerian Red Cross Society, they play a very great role. So Red Cross messages are one of the key messages that when we find people in detention, either temporary or permanent detention areas, we also try to make the authorities understand that these people have the right for the families to know that they are arrested and they are alive and healthy. This we try to do to negotiate with the authorities and they give us the go ahead to give out like this red cross messages that we assemble and send to family members it's in full transparency with the authorities that are uh, in the detention areas so that family members will know that their father their uh, mother is in detention and is healthy and, and alive uh, this will help them to, to come out of the trauma. Unfortunately, if we are not able to get all this, sometimes our forensic experts will now come out to say, yes, uh, we were able to uh, discover that this, uh, this cop, I mean, this uh, dead body that has been buried two years or three years ago uh, belongs to this family. It's a very daunting task for our forensic experts to be able to bring out this and then to relate to the family. It's really not uh, very, very uh, coordinated native in Nigeria, so to say. Wow. Well, it, it's good to have that picture in mind as, as we think of a day like this. Now, make us understand, you, because you said about 24,000 uh, Nigerians or 24,000 cases of missing people are in Nigeria, which, which seem to top uh, the list of countries on the African continent along uh, Congo, uh, Cameroon, uh, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and the others. But out of this 24,000, about how many have been reunited with their families so far from the statistics that you have? Yeah, we have a number of statistics that we were able to reunite over the, 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 the couple of years in the past. But like I mentioned earlier on, the reunification has to do with so many stages. So for those who have been reunited uh, with the families through uh, information, just sharing information uh, from January to date, to date 
we've had about 73 uh, family members who were able to receive information about their missing families or missing relatives so uh, very few cases were able we were able to reunite physically the last one was the one we did in july where we reunited an old man of 90 years uh, with his family back in jigawa he, he was uh, the village he was fishing was attacked uh, and then he was uh, re, i mean uh, separated with the family for five years so we found him in gamborungala and we were able to move him down to his family uh, to get reunited red cross messages like i mentioned earlier on we've had about one over 170 red cross messages that we were able to share between family members that are either in detention areas or in other areas that uh, we we access to just let the family know that this uh, family member is alive and healthy so, uh, like I said, these are uh, statistics that we've gathered from January to date, and we have about 58 family members uh, that have uh, been reported missing. Uh, we train them in psychosocial uh, and economic uh, support uh, so that uh, they would be able to know that life can still go on even with a missing family member. Wow. All right. Now, talk to us about some of the challenges. What, what is most challenging in the process of trying to reunite a family with uh, someone who is missing? Uh, talk to us about that. How challenging is that? Reuniting people that are missing is one of the most daunting tasks of the organization. And we've tried, we've been battling to see how we will be able to successfully reunite families. Uh, the key challenges we are having, uh, I start uh, from COVID-19 uh, restrictions uh, 2020. We had a lot of restrictions of movement from here to there. So this actually was a key challenge. And if up to now, you still have restrictions of people, uh, not really close restrictions, Restrictions, but you have monitored restriction, restrictions of movement across countries and so on. Sometimes uh, in 2020, we had a lot across states. So this was a key uh, challenge that we had in 2020. Uh, we are overcoming this now. But uh, one of the other key challenge we've had is the culture of the people that we are working in. The culture is a culture that children that are minors sometimes don't call their parents with their names. They call them with uh, daddy or baba and so on and so forth. So it's difficult unless we are able to have accurate names of people and locations at the time they were missing, they, it's really very, very difficult for us to be able to trace this. And addresses in Nigeria is also a challenging thing. Uh, villages don't have specific address. You have only names of people. Uh, so it's for the Nigerian Red Cross, it's very, very difficult to be able to move bicycling from one village to the other, trying to trace a family member that has been mentioned to have been here. So also getting information about uh, when the last place he was uh, separated with the family helps us because if we know that a village uh, was affected by the conflict then we would be able to know the, 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 the population movement from that village to what village uh, next and then we would be able to follow up this sometimes we don't have this accurate information and uh, of, of places where uh, the, the person was first separated with the family so this gives us also a, a challenge but we all are trying to to overcome this uh, like i said uh, we've been doing this uh, for a long period and yeah we we we, we try to, to to make sure that we keep doing our job all right uh, we see that of course the the process of reunification is a rigorous and a very long one that could even take months or weeks or even years but talk to us basically when you have or you found someone who has uh, or who is missing who has been found or a family that has reported uh, that one of their members have been missing where does that process of reunification where does it start from it starts straight from there once a family member is mentioned missing we try to find out more information that is the beginning of the process the families will have to give us a case a complete case that a family member is missing we start from there if it is an adult we try to make sure that the consent of the adult even if we are able to locate him in cameroon and i uh, will have to ask for his consent to reunite him with his family so there are there are processes that we follow uh, the key process is first to get accurate information 
about uh, what uh, happened and what led to the separation, conflicts, uh, attacks on villages, and so on. Otherwise, uh, we will keep following up step by step, uh, working with the Nigerian Red Cross very closely, working with community leaders that know addresses of places, and also uh, sometimes we go as far as uh, working with the media uh, if the families are, 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 agree on this on this process. All right, share with us what form of assistance are you receiving? I, I mean the the ICRC, uh, either from the government or other international organization, what, what kind of assistance uh, are you receiving and what do you need? What is needed more to do this? For uh, working closely with other international organizations, it's actually a good collaboration uh, to, co to continue to inform them that we actually are doing this program of family reunification. So as long as people and organizations know that we are doing this family reunification, they would be able to support. Whenever they find a case of a missing person, they will now relay to the to the ICRC for further action. For, for the government, it's actually uh, a collaboration. We do this uh, severally, like I said, uh, in, in earlier on, uh, many people that are missing sometimes are found in detention areas. So we have a good collaboration with the uh, government authorities in charge of uh, detention and detainees in all detention facilities. So we visit uh, almost all detention facilities in Nigeria, uh, very collaborative with the government. Our visit does not mean that we are going to tell the authorities to release these people, but just for us to know that uh, the standard of international national humanitarian law first is followed and secondly the families of the missing are also informed about their missing loved one that is possibly in detention areas uh, in various places even if the authorities don't want the deten detention facility to be mentioned yes this is something we also understand but we will also always insist that this family member and his families are able to know that at least he's in detention and he's alive hmm. All right, Ali Udawobe, thank you so much for talking to us and thank you for everything that you do for humanity. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me and have a good morning. All right.